Yeah, I guess just kind of generally curious because here in Canada, we've been very, it's very challenging for patients to access peptides, but I know in your neck of the woods and other places, it's been more accessible, although you mentioned before we started recording that the FDA made some changes and it's more challenging to access a wider range of peptides these days, unfortunately. Would you be able to maybe speak to your experience with how effective you know, BPC-157 and thymosin beta-4 has been in your practice? So say folks, maybe if they're just using peptides, what has that been effective for and how often is, is it effective? And then if they're using, say, you know, Prolo or PRP or other orthobiologics, you know, how, how effective is it to add in those extra peptides on top of that? Yeah, so, good question. So first, I'll, I'll give the FDA disclaimer here, which is that so back in October, the FDA moved injectable peptides into a category that no longer allows compounding pharmacies to make the peptides in order for them to, to be sold. And everybody can have their own theories on, on why this happens. But it's a huge detriment to the, the population here of chronic pain sufferers because these peptides were so fantastic at, at, at helping people. And so right now what that leaves is it leaves a few oral peptides. So BBC-157 is available as an oral supplement here in the U.S. And then there's a few other oral ones that we use. One of them is a growth hormone secretagogue called ibutamorin. Helps improve growth hormone levels, which growth hormone can help with healing of soft tissues. Obviously, we have to be cognizant of the, the role of growth hormone and IGF-1 in cancer and things like that. And so it's a fine balance there. But that's left people with only either getting the oral or turning to research chemical websites where the peptides are not made in a GMP facility. They're not made in a compounding pharmacy. That means prices are lower. However, the these places are not batch testing for endotoxins and other things that uh, contaminants that could be present that can cause a lot of serious health issues. And so I don't advise people to go out and just, you know, search for peptides online and then buy something from a website because it is just, it's risky. Most people are going to be fine doing it, but we have seen some very horrific things happen to people when they get dosed with these endotoxins. So, but when we were heavily using peptides, I mean, they were... I mean, they were the, 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 the greatest thing since sliced bread in terms of non-interventional approaches for helping patients to heal from chronic pain. I'll, I'll, I'll caveat that to say, though, that I would never just do peptides in replace of some of the core supplements and nutrients that we know to be beneficial for healing. So things like vitamin C, collagen, essential amino acids, and ensuring enough protein intake through the day. Those core things needed to be there in order for these peptides to work so fantastic. But yeah, the peptides were probably in our practice, I'd say helping about 70 to 80% of our patients not have to do a procedure or not have to go down the road of surgery. And then when we added in the peptides on top of, you know, a PRP or a stem cell procedure or prolo or something like that, you know, we consistently saw that patients rebounded faster from the injection and then also had better outcomes because of that.